Hello, how the tech are you? This is our weekly tech show on Echoplex Media. We talk about tech news and science news and any other tech and science stuff we feel like talking about. I am historian Matt, and I usually talk about like green energy and AI um, and some security stuff. Today I got like a little bit of security stuff and a little bit of AI. So back to my roots from last week when I didn't talk about either. So uh, my two stories, my first story is Android calls 911 way too much. Uh, I'll describe what's going on there. And the other one is uh, ChatGPT invents cases and lawyers get fined. That's a fun one. So HK is out on adventure today. So Dave, what do you got? I have three stories this week, but one of them is not really a story. Uh, the first one is <clears throat> a company called Genius is trying to sue Google for uh, copyright, sort of, but Genius doesn't own the copyright on the stuff either. Second one is uh, the world's best Rick roll. And then Amazon it wants to recruit small businesses in your community to deliver packages for them. Wow. All right. I guess I'll get started on my first topic. Of the real quick one. So, uh, Android is calling 911 too much. Uh, of course, this has to do with Android's new emergency call shortcut, which is causing like way too many calls going to 911 and other emergency lines around the world. Of course, 911 is the US. I don't know what other countries use the same one. UK is a different, I think it's 999. Anyways, uh, basically, it was a new feature added in Android 12. And it allows you to call an emergency line by basically pressing the power button five times. Of course, this is kind of a problem if you keep your Android in your pocket and that you can accidentally press the power button five times, uh, unsurprisingly. Um, this is only becoming an issue now, even though Android 12 came out about a year, year and a half ago, because even though when it first came out, it went out on pixels. I'm sure that increased call volume then, but... Uh, it takes about a year and a half before some of the other, uh, not carriers, but other phone makers start pushing it, the latest version of Android out. Uh, so now they're going, it's Android 12 is going out to other phones um, from different carriers. And apparently, I don't know if any of these other phones are just, it's easier to press the power button five times, but um, it's definitely just with more phones, it's just causing a lot more traffic. Uh, finally, you can turn off this feature, maybe. Uh, apparently, you can do it in on the Pixel, which is Google's phone, so it has all the stock menus and stuff like that. But on other devices uh, manufactured by other companies, they tend to change around the menus in Android, and it can be very different and hard to find. Some of them don't even allow you to turn it off, but most of them you can do something. Like some of them you can't turn off this feature, but you can have it notify you if it uh, tries to call 911, like make some noise or something. So what do you think about that, Dave? I'm on a Galaxy S9, and I think I'm on Android 10. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doesn't you affect know, you. <clears throat> not getting security patches, and uh, some of the some apps, uh, when they go to update, they're like, oh, can't run on your phone anymore. But at least my phone's not going to bother the good people at 911. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, apparently it's a, it's a huge problem. Like a lot of getting tons of calls, like hundreds of calls, sometimes at a night. On pocket of just dials. Nothing, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, pocket dials. Uh, I have uh, Pixel 7, uh, so it should be up to date with the latest version, but I have not had that problem. It has not called 911 for, for me on accident. But then again, I don't really keep it in my pocket as much as I used to. So. Yeah, after the show, you may want to go turn that feature off anyway, if it's a pure Android phone yeah, to let you turn it off. Look it up. So the trick is, I guess, for each phone, you, based on the manufacturer, you have to look up the uh, directions specifically for your phone if you want to turn it off, because uh, all of them are a little different, which I'm, in certain respects, I'm surprised that Google allowed, but, oh, wow. I mean, this is, the idea here, right, is so that you can discreetly call nine like nine one one in an emergency yeah i don't know they didn't actually say what the purpose of this was i don't know if it's discreetly or easily because people have been known to 
forget the number, <laughs> you know, in, in an emergency. Uh, and it's easier, maybe easier to just press a button five times. You used to be able to like touch the uh, place on the screen when it's locked to, to do it. I think that's still probably, I think that has to be there. I think you, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think like there's a, there's some rule about that where you can't, if like I find a phone, even if it doesn't have service, it has to let me call 911. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're, if you're in an abandoned building or whatever, and there's a phone hooked up, you can still get 911. Yeah. So I think that's the same for cell phones. So I think that's still there. The, the thing is like, this is kind of dumb in a way, because if you know, you're in a situation and you call 911, but you can't speak to them, say, well, they have no idea where you're at if you're on a cell phone. Yeah. Which is, um, which is going to change soon, if I'm not mistaken. But I thought it like they could somehow get the, uh, the your phone can send a GPS signal or something. I think not that's signal, but I think that's like on the way location. or something. But I, I, okay, I could be wrong. Implemented yet? Yeah. I think we may have even done a story about that at one point. Well, yeah, I think there was something like it may not be called uh, on the phone, but if you like text messaged nine one one, they would it would send your that long based on your GPS. Ah, yeah. Like I said, I think we covered something about that on how the tech are you, but yeah. I don't know. This is this is super annoying. I I they should make it a combination of buttons. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Hit the power the the power button and the volume up button or whatever and hold it or something. Yeah. Some, well, the problem with that is I, I bet you could do that pretty easily yeah. in a pocket. Oh man. So almost I'm, I'm really surprised like hitting it five times, but I guess that could happen. What about like the same button five times? Cause it's usually, that's why they do it that way. Or maybe the power button and like volume up in a certain sequence alternating left, right, that's left, right, likely. AB start. Yeah. <laughs> Up, down, left, right, AB's like start. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fucking annoying and they got to fix it because this is, <clears throat> you know, the people that are doing this don't want to be annoying the 911. Well, not annoying. Yeah. It's not just annoying. It's like getting in the way. You're like, yeah. you know, clogging yeah. the channel. That, that's pretty bad. Yeah. What do you cool. got next? So my next story, uh, this one I think has gone around. Uh, it's been around for a little bit. Uh, Le I think Legal Eagle covered it a while ago. So I, I put a link to that. I think it's the same one. It sounds like the same one, but basically uh, a couple lawyers, uh, Steven Schwartz and Peter Loduca uh, tried to use ChatGPT to speed up research for a case. So basically they were looking up case history and and trying to look up cases and for some reason thought that chat gpt was like a search engine that they could just type in what they want and get a result unfortunately they didn't realize that chat gpt sometimes just makes stuff up and it totally did for this particular case and they just made a bunch of made up a bunch of case law um it apparently was pretty obvious so they didn't actually like look over these cases uh the judge in the case said that the what the what chat gpt returned was clear to least to them clearly gibberish so they, like if they actually read it it would have uh they should have caught it but they didn't they they turned it in and tried to pass it off as actual real case law and uh the judge took one look at it and threw it out and then ended up finding the two lawyers for for doing this for not uh actually giving them you know for basically passing off false case law as real um also because the the cases actually like cited real judges the lawyers also basically have to send uh, apology letters i guess you could call them to those judges let them know like what happened and how they uh try to use chat gpt so uh basically what's what seems to be happening is chat gp is not going to take over lawyers jobs anytime soon what do you think dave there's that old saying like somebody who has themselves as a lawyer has a fool for a client but there's got to be some version of that for like using chat gpt in your law firm <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying to use chat gpt as a search engine as a fool for a search engine right? it's, a, it's dumb i could see like <clears throat> i could see like a way in which this could have been a kind of a cool story where the attorneys 
tried to do it, looked over it, and then explained why you shouldn't do this. I, I bet a bunch of people did. Like, I, I'm guessing these are not the only lawyers, but most likely these lawyers like did not actually look over what they got. Like they didn't do doing any due dil diligence. Blah. Um, and for some reason, let it pass through. Uh, and they got smacked down pretty hard. Well, uh, laziness, I would say it was laziness or yes. Uh, some maybe some combination of laziness and hubris where they thought, Oh, we can get away with this. <laughs> maybe I don't know. From what they said, it doesn't sound like they intended to pull something over on the judge. It really sounds like they thought that chat GPT was a search engine and that they were just searching for these cases and it's just a faster way to search. Uh, and that obviously was not correct. Uh, so, well, so they're idiots. Yeah. It sounds more like they're idiots. They're, <laughs> you know, not computer literate, I guess you could say not AI literate. Uh, cause a lot of other people have, you know, lots of people have pointed out that chat GPT makes stuff up and even like simple research into chat GPT, they should have known that, but then clearly they didn't know that chat GPT wasn't a search engine. <laughs> No, it's a chat. It, yeah. Search engines chat don't. Bot. If you say hi to the search engine, it doesn't just return a hello. <laughs> well, I don't know. They might now, but. <laughs> Depends which one, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's crazy. Don't, don't, don't let, uh, don't, don't hire a lawyer. Don't hire these lawyers. Yes, very much so. Or maybe, maybe these are the best lawyers now because they just got smacked down. So they're being extra careful and dotting all their, <laughs> dotting all their I's and crossing all their T's. It's like after a restaurant, like it gets busted by the health department. It's probably the safest place in town to eat, you know? Yeah. Maybe they'll go into AI law now and <laughs> figure out everything that they <laughs> didn't know before and become specialists. That'd be a great way for the story to turn out. But I think that's probably not yeah. how this is going to go. Probably not. No, they're probably just going to gonna be like oops and move on which is fine yeah. actually all right i guess i guess uh my stories i got three but the second one isn't really a story we got there's a company called uh genius is uh trying to sue google for scraping uh song lyrics off their website and uh not going so well for them because uh they were previously they previously lost in the eastern district of new york and uh they lost at the second circuit court of appeals and the supreme court rejected the lawsuit the long and short of it is you can't really go after Google for scraping uh, information on your site if you're not the copyright owner in the first place. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? <laughs> yeah, I have always thought it was strange, like the whole copyright around lyrics to songs, because you'd think that the people who wrote the lyrics would have the copyrights, but all these different uh, websites post them. I guess they just have people listening to the song and writing them down afterwards. And yeah, I think they I think yeah, they have accurate. Yeah, yeah, I think that's how they kind of get around. Like, they're not actually making a copy of the lyrics. They're, like, listening yeah. to, what is that? They, they always call it, like, the analog hole or whatever. Yeah. But the, the idea that, that they're going to go and do that and have a website that makes money on somebody else's song lyrics just for through ad revenue. Maybe they're not making money. I think They probably are. And then they're going to turn around and sue Google for, like, excerpting the song lyrics is hilarious. It's yeah. just... <laughs> Copyright copyright rules are already maddening, and these people are just trying to make it worse. Yep. But everybody was like, no. Just everyone was like, <laughs> absolutely not. We will not. We will not be participating in this, which is good, I guess. Sometimes the courts get it right. In this case, the courts definitely got it right. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Does that mean that this website gets shut down, and now we don't get lyrics at all, or what happens? Um, oh no I've nothing just, like literally nothing happened right <laughs> like the website's like still there changed. google's still scraping <laughs> the lyrics off the website because i'm sure google's scraping them but also still linking to where where they came from yeah so they're probably still getting some click-throughs yeah yeah like like i said nothing happened yeah that's that's my my take and i don't think that it's you know i don't think that the, we should be shutting down websites for having lyrics to songs that that's that would yeah, be yeah that's kind of silly that would be massive overreach but also, if yeah. you have a website like that, you, you need to get in where you fit in and understand that people are going to copy what you did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because all you're doing really is copying what someone else did. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. So up next is a story that's almost not a story, but Rick Astley at Glastonbury this year uh, 
sang his famous song, Never Gonna Give You Up. Copyright being what it is, you're just gonna have to click the link in the show notes. Okay. Matt, do you remember the first time you got Rickrolled? I do, and I didn't get it. Like, I didn't understand <laughs> what it was going. I was very confused <laughs> for a while, and it wasn't, it was actually funny. Like, it wasn't until much later that I figured out what, <laughs> what happened. Right. That makes yeah. Any I, sense. I can't necessarily say I remember it, but I didn't understand it either. Like, I clicked a link and yeah. it was just Rick Astley's never going to give you up. And I'm like, yeah. But I'm like, my mom likes this song, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I was actually at work and I asked somebody for some, like a link to something and they sent me that and, you know, I, I knew they were a joker, but I didn't like, I'm like, why did you, I don't understand what's going on. What's, <laughs> like this, why did you send me this? <laughs> you're like, they're like, Matt, this is a big internet joke now. They didn't even tell me like what it was like. I, I don't know. It was very strange. At least they didn't send I, you goatsy. That's true. <laughs> well, but you were at work. That would be highly inappropriate at work, actually. Yes, it would be someone. very inappropriate at work. That's a, you get fired that, for that kind of stuff. That was at least work appropriate. <laughs> right, yeah. There's absolutely nothing more safe for work than Rick Astley's never going to give you up. Yeah. It was probably yeah. one of the most wholesome pieces of audio ever recorded. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know so, how that became a thing, but... Well, he, it, he, it is a thing. He clearly doesn't mind. He did a nine no, minute rendition it? of it with cloud crowd participation at Glastonbury this year. Wow. So okay. I bet I gotta I, check that out. Yeah. I it, heard about it. I actually listened to it. It was fantastic. The dude still the dude cool. the dude in his band, they still got it. It was fantastic. Yeah. It almost like except for the crowd parts, it was in some ways indistinguishable from the album, which was wow. pretty cool. But you could tell he was really singing. So yeah, I was pretty impressed with it. Generally, not a fan of, you know pop music or whatever but that that one it's a bit of it's a bit of internet history so yeah. we'll go ahead and give that a pass here up next <clears throat> i got amazon after having played no small role in killing small business wants to recruit small businesses in your community to deliver packages for them because of course last year uh, vox had reported that amazon was secretly recruiting mom and pop shops in alabama mississippi and nebraska to join the pilot delivery program uh the Looks like the program is called Hub Delivery, and people, it appears, are going to get a whopping $2.50 per package uh, delivered. They, the idea was essentially at the beginning, I think, for rural areas, but that's not economically feasible, I don't think, in rural areas. I think it's more economically feasible in the city for well, small I'm businesses little, to do this. I'm slightly confused. Um I thought I had this when I <laughs> read it the first time. Are they asking these people to deliver to the doors? Yes. Or is this like the, oh, it is? Because there's also like the Amazon like pickup thing where they have like lockers at certain local businesses. And that's what kind of it sounded like when you just read it. It didn't, um, it didn't say that, but I, I can't imagine it not. Why wouldn't you do both? Like if you were going to do one, if you were going to do the delivery well, there's part. A good, there's a good reason. Like you may not have deliver like delivery people. Like if you have delivery people, then it makes sense to deliver to customers doors and become a contractor for Amazon. But if you don't have that, but you have space in a local community, maybe in a rural area, you're in like a local, like a small town or something. Uh, it would make sense to, to sell basically locker space for Amazon right. and like basically get rental from that. Almost every Seven Eleven here has it. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, almost nice, but... almost every Seven Eleven I go <laughs> to. I so like if I if I if I know I'm not going to be home and I know nobody's going to be here, like if if the delivery date appears that it's going to be a, a just for whatever reason I know nobody's going to be here and the the thing that I'm ordering is you know over like over a hundred bucks, I have it sent to the yeah. locker at Seven Eleven. Fair enough. It's a I it's easy as hell. I don't know if you've ever done it. It's pretty cool. No, I haven't done it. Um when I was in California, there wasn't anyone like near me, like those locker places, even though there was a seven 11, but I don't think the seven 11 had started doing that when I was there. Um, now I'm either going to be home right? <laughs> or, you know, I live, you know, where my near my parents. So if it's a real problem, I just tell my parents to pick it up, you know? Yeah. That's another thing is that if, <clears throat> If I know I'm not going to be home and I'm not in a big hurry to get the item, sometimes if it's if it's expensive, I'll have it sent to mom and dad's house. Even now that, I, and when I, yeah. after I move, I'll be a 
10 minute bike ride away from mom and dad. So I'll have all my packages sent there. Yeah. <laughs> the neighborhood I'm moving to better. isn't a bad neighborhood, <laughs> but my parents live in a nice neighborhood. So that works. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I think that, I think that the model here for like the rural area for the delivery isn't going to work. There's going to be no like 250 yeah, package delivery. Yeah. That's not very much. Nope. And it's why aren't, does Amazon just not deliver to certain rural places right now? Oh, I bet they don't use their own trucks. They probably use the mail. If you live in the rural area, they probably use the United probably, States postal yeah. service because they're going to be there anyway. Yeah. Whereas where I live, even in the, you know, even in the burbs, it, it Amazon, it's, uh, it behooves them to just deliver themselves because it's dense enough here that there's no, yeah. but maybe there's areas where it's in between or maybe in big cities, like maybe in San Francisco, those little purple Amazon trucks might have some problems in certain parts yeah. of the city. Whereas like a yeah. local business would know like, okay, you got to set, actually you got to send this guy out on a motorcycle or like you're not, you know, you can't send a van down that street because you'll have a hard time getting out of that street. Like maybe they're yeah. count, like for cities, they're counting on like uh, knowing the, the lay of the land really well, but the, you know, the article mentions rural areas and I just don't see this being feasible. Like in, in a rural area, you're going to be very far from some of the customers. Yeah. That's what I thought it was the locker thing because it would make sense in a rural area to do the locker thing. And then you're renting out space in your local shop, but right. It, 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 that people that might've never been to your shop before are going to go into your shop. Absolutely. That's yep. Yeah. You know, 7 Eleven. Why, why do you think 7 Eleven was the first major one to do it? Because you're going to go in there, you're going to pick up your thing, and you're going to be like, you know, I haven't had a Slurpee in about three years. And then you're going to yeah. buy a Slurpee, <laughs> or you know, maybe, maybe you start smoking again because you're like, oh, they sell cigarettes here, or uh, yeah. something like that. But, Hopefully, not that. <laughs> or, you know, I could see um, even just a strip mall, not necessarily any of the businesses, having the lockers somewhere yep. at the strip mall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I can't. No. This delivery thing—it seems, it seems like they're just gonna screw. Like they're gonna, they're gonna sell these businesses. Oh, you're gonna make money on this, and then they're gonna lose money on it. Yeah, and uh, that's it. That's that's my stories. Um, I like the second one the best, but I couldn't. We couldn't run it, unfortunately. It was fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody has to go check that second one out. If you run a small business in a rural area, don't sign up for this. But like Matt was saying, if you got room for the lockers, get the lockers because you'll get to meet some of your. Yeah meet some of the people in your community and maybe make a little extra money. You'll make money on the lockers, but you probably make a little extra on uh, people uh, buying things from your shop too. So, the foot traffic, right? That, yep. Yep. Yeah. And not a lot of foot traffic in rural areas, but people do want their packages. And if it yeah. shows, if they can get it a day earlier by having it, having it go to these, one of these delivery boxes, people will do it. People are in a big hurry for their Amazon stuff. Yeah. Don't mind me hitting my mic stand. There. That's whatever. That's, that's uh, fine. I, uh, I, I stream sometimes, uh, very intoxicated. So you can imagine the kind of mishaps that, uh, that happen late at night around here. In fact, you've probably seen them occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I guess I'll, I'll close the show out. I'll, okay. I'll read us out. This has been, uh, how the tech are you? This is our weekly tech show. I'll uh, probably be off next week, but, uh, we'll be back the week after that in theory. You can uh, support this project at eplex.store with a Patreon-like membership or just patreon.com slash echoplex if you're already a Patreon user and you don't want to sign up for something else. Everything else, echoplexmedia.com. Have a great week.